twice where Jimmy locked up a left front, and then I saw him bump up and hit the right rear against the wall. That might have slowed him up just a little bit, but he uh, seems not to be that affected by it at the moment. I think we had indicated that Paul Tracy had been in and out of the pits. That, in fact, was Al Unser Jr., his teammate. Tracy remains in third place. And look at him, boy, why? They all come off that corner. Is it getting slicker, or is that the driving style? Well, I don't think it's getting any slicker at this stage, but what happens on that first lap when you can't really warm up the tires as much as you'd like behind the pace car. So what happens is they start to get on it, they're accelerating, they're trying to get a little gap away. The tires aren't up to their optimum uh, operating temperature, and so they're sliding around a little bit more. All right, let's go pit side. John Beacons. Paul, a couple of quick Penske updates. First of all, Emerson Fittipaldi, they're still working to try and cure that problem, have not found the solution. The second is that Allenser Jr. chose during that yellow caution period to come in, take on a full load of fuel, or at least as much fuel as he needed to fill the tank, and four new tires. So already Penske trying some new strategy with Al Jr. Well, I think one of the things he's trying is it's obvious that it's very difficult to pass here. Take uh, Robbie Gordon this morning. He was second quickest, started 14th. He's, he's only up to 10th. He can't do it. It's a very difficult course to pass a faster car on. Uh, Roger Penske's trying a little strategy. He's trying to think, well, maybe we can just get everybody out of step here. They've all got a pit under a green. We won't have to, and maybe we'll jump up some spots, pass them in the pit. 14 laps now, the 65 lap schedule distance here now complete. Tight at the front of the order. Though as yet, Scott Pruitt has not had a chance to really poke out and get into the fight. Michael Andretti sits in fourth place right now. We ride with him. Uh, you can see Michael right there, just going right across the curb. He's trying to shortcut as much as he can He's very physical around here. It's worked for him in the past. He jump, tends to jump over those curbs as much as possible. Whoa, there's a Jill DeFerrin. He obviously got tangled up with somebody there. There was another car that back there. That was Fernandez was the other car. They've been racing all through this, nose to tail. Obviously, somebody tried to make the pass. So Fernandez backs it all the way off the course. DeFerrin is able to get it going. We'll keep an eye out for Fernandez. And back to Michael Andretti, he's very physical around here. We're just looking at a shot right now over his shoulder. We're looking at last year's winner, Paul Tracy, right in front of him. He seems to be closing up. Obviously, that style's benefiting him right now. Michael Andretti, of course, won a couple of years ago. Boy, great shots. Nice crystal clear. See him going over that curve right there. And Michael says he really likes this track. But he said it takes a rhythm, again, over the curb there. But it takes a rhythm. When you get in the rhythm, you can really make this place work. Gil DeFerrin just came limping into the pits with a motor sounding off song. And as you can see right there, uh, Fernandez, they were going. There's DeFerrin in the pits. You saw, too, from the onboard camera, the uh, safety team down there trying to get uh, Fernandez out of the escape room. Here's that situation, Danny. Well, it looks like that Adrian O. Oh, Looks like Adrian just moved over there to protect his position a little bit. They were very close. Just touched and spun Adrian around. So DeFerrin already back on the circuit as we come back to watch that battle for third place as Michael Andretti closes in on Paul Tracy. Here are two guys with really similar styles, Michael Andretti and Tracy. Now you been following the uh, fortunes or misfortunes of Emerson Fittipaldi. He's now with Jan Bikas. That's right, Paul. It turns out it is a misfortune now. It looks like it was an electrical problem for you. Was that the problem, Emma? Uh, we don't know yet, but uh, it's a shame the car was running strong. I was very strong at full tanks. And I had a good pace beginning of the race. That's a shame. You know, this year, let's say it happens three together. This is the third one. Long Beach should be good. Well, hopefully Long Beach will work well for you. I know it was early in the race, but any, any kind of read on track conditions so far? Uh, track conditions are very clean, very nice track. It looks beautiful, the track. All right, we wish you better luck at Long Beach. I hope so. Thank you. i tell you what, Emerson's luck hasn't been very good here. He, he managed to either lose or get his passport stolen. Uh, planned trip to Tahiti, the tickets for that were there. So <laughs> He's not having much luck, but he, week. but he has had luck here in the past. Of course, he won it, I think, in 1992. 
I tell you right now that Michael's car, the black one right there behind Paul Tracy, looks to be a little bit uh, quicker. He's uh, just got to find a way around Paul, and that's not going to be easy. All right, so 16 laps are now complete. Nothing changes at the top of the order. We've seen some interesting racing, but Jimmy Vassar still leads it over Scott Pruitt, Paul Tracy, Michael Andretti, and Alex Zanardi, then Christian Fittipaldi, Greg Moore, Robbie Gordon, Bobby Rahal, and Mauricio Guzman. You're a hungry power, aren't you? <laughs> Very close to my head. Jill DeBaron relaxing here. Look what they did for him. For a little parasail, they make up a model of his car. Here at Firestone, we know what it takes to get your attention. One heck of a tire. A Firestone tire with all the warranty you'd ever want. Plus, one heck of a price. You got it. An unbelievable price. Four for 99 bucks on genuine Firestones. The winningest tire name ever at Indy. Firestone quality at an affordable price. Got your attention, huh? Hurry in now to your local Firestone retailer. When cars raced at an awesome five miles per hour, mobile oil was there. When a race car broke 100, mobile was in it. Mobile was in the winner of the first race across America. And since then, Mobile has been in more Indy 500 winners than any other oil in the history of Indy. So if you think that all oils are alike, think about something. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. In 1995, you saw Ford win big in NASCAR. Watched Ford win one off-road title after another. Watched Ford win the Trans Am Championship. And saw Ford Cosworth win the Indy 500. But have you seen what we're doing with all the winnings? Target teammates, Alex Zanardi and Jimmy Vassar. Alex? Hey, there's nobody better. I mean, he was born to drive. I'm new to the Target team, but Jimmy has made me feel right at home. Alex is the fastest thing on four wheels. Really. Words cannot describe how we feel about Jimmy. They're the greatest women's basketball team ever assembled. They're ready to make history. And who's gonna stop them? See a crucial test Saturday on ABC Sports. We're back, Surfers Paradise, Australia. Paul Tracy is in trouble. He was running third, and we've got Whoa. more than one car in trouble look at there. This. If they blocked the track. Somebody totally stopped their foot. And the oh. look at it, gets a help. Ray Hall, Ray Hall pushed him. He pushed him out of the way. <laughs> Robbie couldn't get going, and he pushed him out of the way. Look, there's Christian Fittipaldi. He stopped doing his waving. Hey, I'm stopped here. Give me some help. Oh. oh my gosh, have you seen Ray I'll just push him out of the way like well, that? Well, the nose cone's supposed to be strong enough. Here is Michael Andretti. Trying to make the pass after the double chicane. That's a good spot. Going in on him. And Paul just turns down and Michael, oh, don't come down now. Tap right there, rear wheel. And look what it did to Michael's right front. It might, that might have just turned the steering wheel, but that also might have damaged that right front. Let's see here, does he get over him? Yeah, running over the nose didn't help it either. No, I don't think he actually ran over it. It looked close. But did you believe that with Ray Hall afterwards? <laughs> and he's in a very critical spot there. I, I, here we are from the other angle. Comes in. You see Michael's already locked up. He's going, uh-oh, don't turn, don't turn. Please don't turn. Got a little sideways. Bam. Oh. That might have just turned looks that like, wheel. but yeah, it, looked, it looks bent. It looked like he might have bent. But that created a traffic traffic jam down in the corner and here's what Bobby Rahal did when he recognized he was in serious traffic oh, oh, oh. They're, they're coming in the same corner it's all jammed up look they, they're trying to get a gear Bobby can't get a gear so Bobby's like come on come on you gotta go you gotta go so he just pushes him <laughs> oh my way to go I'll tell you who's, who's gotta really be thankful there's Robbie Gordon I don't think he can get a gear 
Christian Fittipaldi is in the pits now. Not a good day for the Fittipaldis. What about Paul Tracy, though, Jack Aroon? Well, Paul, just as we surmised, they were practicing changing noses. Paul Tracy has to exchange one here under green flag conditions. Now, what they do is they have a set of set screws that hold the nose on. They are having some problems getting the set, set screws to start. They finally completed that action. They're backing away. But this has been a long stop. They put a new set of front wings on Paul Tracy's car. And of course, during that, we're also keeping track of Christian Fittipaldi. They looked at the front of his car and finally got him back out in the action as well. It doesn't change the first two positions, Vassar and Pruitt, uh, but uh, Michael Andretti, uh, with some now what appear to be somewhat serious problems. And what's interesting too is we are only yellow in that area of the racetrack. That really surprises me considering how jammed up it was. And Paul Tracy starts to climb out of the car and the twin checkered flags come out at the start finish line and that indicates full course yellow and that means that virtually everybody will head into the pits for their stop. So the standings ahead of the stop, Vassar, Pruitt, Michael Andretti, Alex Zanardi, Greg Moore moves up as a result of that accident. Ray Hall, Gordon, and Guzelman will be back. It has the highest ground clearance in its class. But more importantly, 1996's pickup truck of the year comes with 190 horses, all with big chips on their shoulders. Toyota Tacoma. You simply can't buy a more powerful compact truck. Put 700 of the world's most powerful horses together, and what do you get? You get out of the way. The Budweiser Ken Schrader stock car. See you at the races. Whoa. Check it out. Yeah, the new Jet Ski 1100 ZXI watercraft. The best from 95's watercraft of the year. Plus more power, 1100 cc's, auto trim, radical carving, total control, and Kawasaki's air induction system hull for less drag, better acceleration, higher performance, cool. I want it, I want it, I want it. With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure platinum center electrode that's heat fused. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power and improved fuel efficiency over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. April is one fast month on ABC Sports. In two weeks, the National Hot Rod Association Speed Demons head to Houston for the Slick 50 Nationals. And six-time champion Allinger Jr. looks for his seventh win at the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. That's all right here, April 14th on ABC Sports. So we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing once again. As we ride with Bobby Rahal, Jimmy Vassar is the leader, followed by Scott Pruitt, but they all made pit stops under this yellow. Nothing particularly noteworthy there, except for the fact that Al Unser Jr. was able to sneak up with that pit strategy that Roger Penske is playing and move into third place, followed by Michael Andretti and Alex Zanardi. But Michael Andretti, when they go green, will receive a black flag for a pit speed limit violation. He was going 87 miles an hour, limits 80. Here they come off that final turn, and we're ready to go back running again at Surfer's Paradise. And don't forget, that's Roger Pitsky's strategy, but Al went from 16th starting position to third. At the front, they close up. Get a glimpse there of Al Unser Jr. He's actually the third-place car. 